Coaches, coaches like to have their own players, and, and they want guys who are going to buy into their system. And anytime there's a coaching change, you've got guys that revolt a little bit, not, not maybe verbally, but uh, you know, you, they don't buy in, and they're, they're not, not with you all the way, and they're not going to do what you want. They think they're going to be short-timer. And so uh, that team uh, lost a number of close games and never really just got over the hump. We would um, shoot ourselves in the foot by getting down so early in the game and then fight our way back, but we just couldn't, you know, finish it. That we lost a lot, and we lost a lot of close games. It was heartbreaking games, and at night, going home uh, late sometimes, I would say, you know what, hopefully those young guys, as freshmen out there, that they'll learn to close those games out next year, and that did happen in my second year here, but a lot of tough losses. We could have easily won 15 games, easily won 15 games. I remember a lot of stuff, man. It was a really tough year. We had a lot of games that we was about to win, but we didn't have enough experience. I think that was the biggest thing I remember of that team is they were good, they were competitive, they were close in these games, but just couldn't figure out a way to finish. Uh, first of all, you know, our state has a history. We, we've had some former professional players become head coaches, and, and they, were, they were name hires, marquee hires. Um, some people thought that was probably the case with Daryl, and, and I know people that thought Daryl probably couldn't cut the mustard at the D1 level. Let us in, he told us he, what he wanted us to do. He told us that he's gonna be on our side and he's gonna work with us, and he understand that he's new and a lot of things are gonna change, so. My parents told me that he played in NBA, so I checked it out on the internet, I saw he played with Jordan. And he was coach also, so it was really interesting for me. He took his time and he worked with us and he told us his principles and all, so we kind of, I kind of adapted to it pretty quickly. He's tough, he's hard-nosed, He's he wants to win, and I respect a guy like that. He's loyal and he'll do anything for you, so it wasn't, it wasn't no thing to adjust to what he was telling me. Well, I always thought this job was a, a, a great job. I thought it was a hidden gold mine. Chris Beard proved that, that you can win here. I thought, the, I thought the community would back the team if you start winning basketball games, and, and it was home for me. I had a chance to come home and coach. The great thing about 1819 is we had Rajon Tucker, and it was easy to you know, write about him, and, and he was doing great things. You know, we had this, this freshman point guard from New York that you kind of got an idea, hey, he, he might be pretty good. Um, we had Nicola, who was a freshman, and that's what I remember most about that year is it was a very young team, and talking with Coach Walker a lot, he had kind of said, you know, we know we're going to take our lumps. We were playing close games, we were coming back from games. You know, we had four games in a row, three or four games in a row, where we were down 12 with four minutes to go. And in all of those, we either came back to tie it or take the lead and then just couldn't finish. And I think that was the biggest thing I remember of that team is they were good, they were competitive, they were close in these games, but just couldn't figure out a way to finish. It was a, it was a life lesson, I guess you could say that. Um, being in a in a face of adversity, like you wouldn't know how to handle that at at being a freshman. Um, we had to mature older, I think, more than other freshmen because it was his first time coaching. It was our first time playing in college, so it was like you have to adjust, you have to mature, and I guess that was the best thing to happen for us. Me uh, being an older guy and already knowing kind of the transition on from high school to college, it was going to be difficult and kind of different for them uh, coming to a situation where, you know, you come in high, from high school and you know you're the man on the team and you got to come in and play in a system where you got to basically prove yourself all over again. That was really a tough situation because we really knew we had a really good team and it was really frustrating that we kept losing really close games. So th that's the thing that I most remember from my first year here. I mean, I remember the, I remember the Coastal Carolina game. Um, we, you know, we're down you know, 12, I think it was, and we come all the way back and we, and we tie it. Tucker for three, Swash! And they come down and, and they make it 74-72. And I remember, thinking, you know, this may be something, <laughs> you know, so I get up and I go with my phone and I'm standing behind the bench just in case some crazy shot happens and the play breaks down, they get into Chris Bankston. 
Inbounds it. Bankston for the win! No, coach um, actually drew up a play for um, a full court pass, but the pass just didn't get open. So instead of me turning the ball over, I just took the shot myself. Bankston for the win! Oh! We came close. Yeah, it almost went in. Like, in practice, I, I shoot half-court shots all the time. I shoot them for fun, and I'm starting to get, you know, better at them. And it just so happened I was in that situation, and I just took my best shot and I missed it. It was close, but it did close. not fall. As Little Rock, despite a late push, falls to Coastal Carolina, 72 to 71. I thought they had some talent, uh, that they played hard. Uh, they loved to, they loved to play, and they were they were they were easy to coach. So. I decided, you know what, I'm gonna take my lumps my first year. Chris Beard did it opposite that I did it. He did it with a bunch of junior college transfers and a lot of guys that was left over that were older. My team was young. I decided, you know what, these guys are gonna be Southports next year and hope we can take a step. And we did, we took a big step. So we go to Georgetown, um, you know, really cool trip. We go at Christmas time and get a chance to go to the White House get a chance to go to the African American Museum. Um, you know, we're playing in, a, in an NBA arena. Tucker, kick out, no! In and out! Tries again, yes! Just the crowd is different from being here in a conference play than it was in Georgetown, um, Memphis, and Nevada. I ended up calling the most of that Georgetown game and it was a, it was a very back and forth game, I remember that. Um, we were in the lead in the second half, you know, some great plays. We're down three, and they inbound the ball to Ryan Pippins and hits a shot from just inside half court, banks it to tie the game. And to this day, I don't know what I said. Pippins. I was fouled. With two, Pippins for the tie. It's just a different type of feeling you have. When you're on the court, you just, it feel like the attention is on you. When you're running, you're hearing people yelling at you. So it's just like, you gotta stay focused. If you don't stay focused, you will mess up. Georgetown survives past Little Rock, 102 to 94 in a wild holiday thriller. If I wouldn't have found out, we for sure would have won that game. No question about it. Uh, I think just the energy and the tenacity that we had as a group, uh, we definitely would have fought through all the adversity that, you know, we had came back, like you said, uh, from being down, sent it to overtime. I think at that time, Georgetown was really on their heels. Like, they expected us to come in there and just kind of lay down. And that's not what we did. But, um, it, was, it was a game going into conference, but I'm like, you know, we, we've got some talent. And, you know, we just had two games in a row where two marquee programs, Memphis and Georgetown, gave them a run for their money on national TV on the road. As freshmen, they played a bunch of minutes. Even though we lost, they still got those minutes. Those minutes, those minutes are invaluable. In the second year, like you said, they knew the system offensively and defensively. Give them their credit though. They, they took a growth their self as players. That's, that, that first year um, allowed us to, to really grow and really see what college was about. Man, you gotta get back in the gym, work harder, learn more, and get ready for the next season. That was my whole thing. We just had to work harder. I, I preached to my team that we had to work harder, and they, they came through and worked hard. My thought was, boy, I'm gonna get me some basketball players. We're gonna recruit. We're gonna get some other players here with this young cast that we have. I thought uh, Coach Baker and Coach Jordan and Preston did a great job of bringing guys in. If you look at our team now, we have length, we have depth, we have shooting. Uh, we're a pretty good basketball team.